I went to the School of the New York Times last year, and I'm going to go back this year too. And there I took a course on writing for a film. Because while writing novels is obviously my main thing, I think it would be really nice to maybe write like a movie one day or write like or, you know, adapt one of my books into a movie. And I think getting into film is something that, you know, like it's interesting to me. So I think I should pursue it. Hello, uh, my name is John Brink and we are podcasting on the brink from downtown Prince George, British Columbia, Canada. And we have a special, very special guest today. It is a young author and a very, very good one. And her name is Shanti Hershison. Welcome on the show, uh, Shanti. Thank you so much for having me. And, and so you are an amazing individual. You have written how many books? 15, 16? So I've actually, I've written 30 books, and then 16 of those have been published, but number 17 comes out in April. Amazing. And you started already doing that when you were about 12? Yes. How did you, you know, so now I'm an author too, and I, I was probably just the opposite from you, is that I'm 83 years old. And I started writing when I was 75, so I was a late bloomer, you were an early one. And so I've done about four or five books. Writing books is not easy. Yeah, not at most, all. No. And, it's and not easy. So, no. And, and then, uh, you know, there is so much more to it rather than writing, is that you have to have the concept, then it becomes a question of the economics of it, obviously, and uh, the cost of the printing, and then you have to figure out uh, what size should the book be physically, what should the font size be, should there be pictures, should there be a foreword, who should do the foreword, and then you have to make sure that once, at least in my case, once I write the book, then from there on in I have to get it edited to make sure that a spelling and all of that is correct. And then the other part is that I let other individuals read it for me, suggest to me, other all the whole process. Yep. And then finally, the most challenging part is it to get it on the marketplace and get exposure in the marketplace and then start selling the books. Now in your case, and I looked, looked quite a bit of your information and, uh, you know, and, and I know you are on all the major media and, uh, you know, and, and so, which, which is amazing. So Thank you. So tell me a little bit, how did this all start? Is writing part of your family or, or how many brothers, sisters do you have or siblings? So I have a twin sister, but she's not necessarily a writer. She does really like to read, but she's, um, you know, she's more into like psychology and she does like other kinds of art. Like she makes jewelry and stuff. Okay. And, and, and so then just tell us about, what was your sister's name? Or what is her name? Her name is Sage. Sage? Yeah. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about how it started for you. Yeah, so you it really... Yeah, it honestly, like, the beginning of my career, like, well, it, there's, like, I have, like, two answers to this. Like, I can tell you when I started writing, which that's a much easier answer. Honestly, like, I've been writing as long as I can remember. When I was really young, say, like, six years old, like, during school, I would just be scribbling these stories. And, you yeah. know, the older I got and the more I had an understanding that this was something I could do, like, when I was older, like, that's what I thought I wanted to do. But it was more for me. It was like, well, I'm going to have a completely different job. And then maybe if I'm successful enough. I'm going to become an author at some point. I'm just going to write like one book. And what ended up happening, and this is like where my career started, it honestly really took me by surprise. I, um, with a friend of mine, when I was in sixth grade, we just started writing this little story together. And it's, um, it was my first novella. It's not very long. It's not very good. I mean, we were literally, you know, 11 and 12. <laughs> but what happened there was I really wanted to get a printed copy of it. You know, I, this was like, I was more proud of this story than like anything else I'd written at the time. I, I don't know if he was, 
um, probably. <laughs> so we were like, let's get a printed copy of this book. So I went, I think I went on Canva and I designed the cover and I was looking into options to print it. Not necessarily even because I wanted to publish it and because I wanted other people to read it because I wanted to have that feeling like I'm a, you know, I'm doing something like I wanted to know how authors felt, if that makes any sense. So I went on Amazon. Make it official. Publishing. Yeah. Like I want to do this, you know, just for fun, whatever. So I went on Amazon's Kindle Direct Publishing. And what I realized was, well, this is an easy way to publish a book, or at least I thought it was easy at the time. If you're not going to put any effort into the book, if you just want to do it for fun. Yeah, it's pretty easy. You know, now I know it's much more difficult than that. Yeah. Um, but at the time, you know, I just threw it on Amazon because I wanted to print a copy of my book. And that was one way to do it. And then I was like, oh, I just published a book. So it's, in many ways, it was kind of like unintentional. But then that what happened is that then gave me like the skill set and the knowledge that this was something I could do. And once I had like the skills and the knowledge to do it, it suddenly sounded like a lot more easier. So then a couple months fly by, my friend and I put another book on Amazon just for fun and the pandemic hits and I am stuck at home. I am bored. I have absolutely like nothing to do. Like, oh my gosh, I was watching TV all day. I was playing video games, you know, the classic 12 year old stuff. And I was like, I want to write a book, but not like the kinds of books that like my friends and I wrote that were pretty short. I want to write my first like full length giant book. And honestly, by the definition, by the definition of giant at the time, I was like, it has to be like at least 100 pages because, you know, when you're like 12 years old, that's the standard. <laughs> so I started writing and the book is called Biome Lock. And very soon I surpassed the 100 page mark and then the 200 page mark. And, you know, I had an infinite amount of time on my hands. So that first novel I wrote at 12 years old became very, very, very long. For context, this is my first ever printed copy of it. This is my like printed first draft. It is 200,000 words. And then you made, three, you made yeah. three copies from it, right? Yes. Show it to us once exactly. more, uh, uh, you know, the uh, shanty. Yeah, yeah, so, and then hold it a little bit further up so we can yeah. see it. So this, the title is? I am locked. And, and yeah, this and became three books. Three books, yeah. So I saw yeah. that in the... Uh, and, and so that was your first? Yes. And, and so what is the topic? Is it... What is it about? So Biome Lock is... It's like an... It's, it's very hard to explain because I was... So um, it's a book that's like a dystopian book and it takes place 30 years after an alien invasion. And what's happened is the aliens have completely overtaken the world. They're using up most of it. And the remaining humans, they're forcing them to live in these biomes. And so the humans, they have to, like, they get, it's, it, I don't know why this part just reminds me of, like, Harry Potter. They have to get, like, sorted into the biome based on yeah, their yeah. behavior as a kid. And um, then from there, they have to survive. But, of course, and, you know, these kids, they're, like, 13 when they get there. So it follows an ensemble cast of characters. Like, I'm telling you, I have never written a book with more characters who have point of views than Biome Lock. <laughs> like, there, I, I think there's, like, at least, like, 10 characters throughout the story that have, like, POVs. I don't necessarily recommend writing that. That gets extremely tricky. But for some reason, I decided to when I was 12. And it follows their, like, journeys as they all come together. And there's a lot of, like, you know, of course, they're going to have to, like, rebel at some point. And there's, like, all of this stuff. Like, even there's, like, a villain point of view, too, at one point. It's a lot. Um, but it was a really, really fun book. And it was the first thing I ever wrote. I had to learn, like, so much about the writing process from it. Everything, right? So where did you e get everything. the inspiration for the concept, so, you know, saying, okay, this, uh, I'm going to talk about the aliens and they came here. Now I'm going to develop, now there's different individuals. So, and they live a life yeah. here in the interact. And, and where did you get all the ideas about? You have to, you, you must have yeah. an amazing fantasy. Oh, I have a really active imagination. I got to tell yeah. you, though, the original, like, Biome Lock was originally not going to have, had it, didn't have anything to do with Alien. Um, no. Originally, so, um, the actual, like, idea for the biomes and you're forced to live in a biome, that was just the original idea. And that actually came from a game of Minecraft I played um, with my sister, where we came up with the storyline briefly. It lasted a day. It was completely, like, insignificant, you know. It was something that we did, and then I didn't think of it until a couple months later. And I was like, you know, that would make a cool story. 
And actually, um, another cool Biomlock fact, it was originally going to be a screenplay at that time. Um, you know, during the pandemic, when I was 12, I was really interested in screenwriting. And I'm still interested in screenwriting, but I actually, you know, I prefer writing novels. And I tried starting writing it as a screenplay. Originally, it was going to be that there was this, like, island, and then this, like, these, like, evil people took over the island, and now they're making the people live in biomes. That was the original concept. And I could not work with it. So then I threw in aliens, and I was like, well, maybe the aliens are going to make this work, and it's going to be the entire world. And that was the idea that really worked. So really, I used the aliens to sort of fix, like, what wasn't working. And then I was just having trouble getting the words out. I didn't really know anything about screenwriting. So then from there, I was like, you know, I'm really only screenwriting because like doing a writing a screenplay because it feels easier to me. Of course, it's not really that much easier. Um, so then I was like, you know what, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to write a novel. So that's kind of how I began. And once I got to that point, I, it was a lot easier. So when I was your age, I'm not even sure I was still, still playing with Legos and all of those kind of things. The last thing on my mind was, uh, uh, you know, writing a novel or talking about screenplays you mentioned. Uh, maybe for our guests watching us from around the world, maybe just explain what a screenplay is. Oh yeah, so a screenplay, um, that is basically like how you write a movie. Right. So, you know, you write like the scene and the dialogue. And um, I actually, I took a screenwriting class in New York over this last summer. It's okay. in some ways similar to writing a novel. It's storytelling, but it's also, it's really difficult because you can't like, it's, it's a whole thing. Like you can't really overly describe things. You have to like really write a certain way. So just like a very technical version of like storytelling. Right. right. And, and so, uh, you know, so then you started with that. Now, your parents, they must have thought, what's happening here with Shanti? You know, she is, she is a writing machine. <laughs> or, so what did they say or how did they interact with you? Obviously, they supported you, what you did. Yeah. Uh, you know, but, but uh, you know, the, it is just amazing, you <laughs> know, that to, for you to do that. So did you have a lot of time? You're going to school still. Yeah, but it was online, so yeah. during those, that year. But um, yeah, in terms of my parents, like, I didn't tell them a lot at first. I don't know why, because there was no reason to. I was just slightly, like, awkward about the fact that I was writing a book. Like, I didn't want anyone to ask me too many questions about it. So I don't really, like, I didn't tell them at first. And then we had, like, it was our first, like, family gathering where my aunt and uncle came over. And this was the first time in, like, literal, literally months. And we were all, like, outside, you know, doing the whole social distancing thing. And I came out and I was like, so, guys, I'm writing a book. Can I read you the prologue? And that was, like, my first introduction to the book I was writing to, like, anybody. And, um, you know, they all really liked it. But I'm sure they didn't, like, think much of it because, you know, like, 12-year-olds write stories all the time. And yeah. it wasn't really till I was like nearing the end of the book that I had to really start talking about like, hey, I want to publish this thing. <laughs> yeah. How did you go about that, the publishing? Uh, you know, so obviously now you have written it. And now the next thing is you have to get somebody interested in publishing because publishing is expensive. Yeah. So Be because um, then me, they say, <laughs> how many copies do you want? Yeah. And all of so those me, difficult um, questions, right? Yeah. Oh, it's, it's, it's a challenge. Yeah. So for me, I self-publish with KDP, which means, you know, in some ways it's easier. I don't have to like, you know, query my book and I don't have to like get, I mean, KDP does have to like approve your book, but it's more like technical than anything else. But in many ways, it's also very difficult because, you know, I have to source all, I have to like find my own editors. I have to find my own beta readers. I have to get my own cover and I have to do my own marketing. So all of it um, really like kind of was on me. At 12 years old, I did not know a thing about marketing or about publishing. And um, it was a lot. So also for context, um, Biomlock, actually, though, it was my first book I wrote. It wasn't the first book I published um, because, you know, you have a 250,000 word book that's now split into three different books. The editing yeah. takes a lot. Yeah. So um, in that time that I was editing, I ended up writing uh, this novella. It's a lot longer than my first novella. It's 100 pages um, and there was a series of them. In the first one, that was my real like debut into actually having to market my books. 
and that I ended up um, getting the cover for like fairly cheap for book covers online because book covers can be really pricey. And, um, you know, I had, um, thankfully by then I had a writing coach who helped me edit the book. Okay. And, um, she's still who edits my books now actually. And so from there I had to just completely go in and just start marketing in that book. I don't have it with me right now. It's up there somewhere, but that was called the nightmare of Zal Delane. And that was just my first like adventure into marketing. And so much of it was really just like seeing what works. So I did, I tried to run Instagram ads. I did a lot of like newsletter promotions. And as I went, I just kept researching. And the more I researched and just the more I just tried things out and figured out what worked and what didn't, that gave me like the marketing foundation to release my next book and to see how that one went. And then, you know, I released Biomlock and Biomlock did all right. And then from then, like, I've just kept going. And now I have, I have to say, I have these really established, like, marketing plans that are really laid out and detailed and have all of the goals and the budget and everything. And most of the money I make, I put back into marketing. But um, really, like, originally, I just had no idea what I was doing <laughs> at all. No, but it's, it's <laughs> amazing that you got it off the ground, right? So, yeah. so, the, so is it fiction or is it... Again, maybe tell us what different type of books that we have. I did an autobiography, uh, you know, the, uh, and I went through the same as you did. Uh, the, the only difference was that I was not 12. I was uh, already 75 years old, and I wrote a book, and it's an autobiography on my life, and it's called oh, Against really cool. All Odds, and uh, quite successful, actually. But even when I wrote this, I had a lot of people, I had an interesting life, and a lot of people said to me, you should write a book about it. So, and then oh, for the last 20 years, I started, I stopped, I started, I stopped, and on and on and on. And then in my case, if I didn't do it now when I was 75, then probably will never happen. And then, but autobiographies are not easy, and not if it is the first book that you ever write right so uh yeah you cannot write it and then you put it out there and say mm, i don't like it i'll do another one no you got one chance to write it and then it better be right so what i had to do is design the cover on it oh, yeah. the That's size of the name for one and then it has this one the font it has pictures in it in this particular case and uh, so that became the book and then uh you know i did Another one that, uh, you know, that uh, uh, was about, uh, you know, I find a lot of people don't like what they are doing. And uh, I believe that it's very important that if you do something, no matter what it is, you have to like it. If you like it, you can work very hard and you be very productive like you are. And, but a lot of people, other people don't. They say, no, I don't like what I'm doing. And I, I said, do something different then, because then obviously you're not very happy individual, not a happy individual to be around. So I wrote a book about that. It's finding your passion, living the dream. And oh, so, nice. uh, and, and again, the title is important. So it took me a long time to think about it. And uh, so this one is catchy and saying, okay, John, are you living the dream? I sure am. And then I did another one that I'm going to just kind of quickly show you that I'm working on right now is that I believe, uh, you know, health and fitness is very important. Diet is very important. And so I wrote a book about what I call living young, dying old. And this is the, uh, the cover. That's, yeah, that's me, a actually. really cool cover. <laughs> I'm into uh, physical health and bodybuilding and, and so, but... Living young, dying old, to me means uh, it's, it's not so much age, but quality of life that is important. Especially when you get older, it's very, very important. And I wrote one other one I'm going to show you that is interesting, that you may find interesting, is that I was not very successful academically. I failed grade three and I failed grade seven three times. And it was much, much later in my life that already uh, when I was into my uh, about 57 years old that I discovered that I had ADHD. And, and I, the more I found out about it and the more frequent I understood that it exists around the world, not many people understand it, 
that I, and I speak about it quite frequently now in my podcasting and other things and create awareness. I wrote a about, book about that, ADHD Unlocked, quite oh, successful sure. actually. And, and so those are the kind of books that I do. And uh, these are the four that I'm still working on, the one, Living Young, Dying Old. And then I look forward and I'm trying to write one book a year, but not so much science fiction, more on other things that are important in my life, like I like to work with young people about uh, finding your passion, living their dream and making choices on those kind of things. The same then finding that in my life, uh, for most of my life, I was ADHD by birth, obviously. And, but because of yeah. some of the challenges along the way, it would have been much easier for myself, my family, if I would have discovered earlier. And so that's kind of why I've been fairly vocal about that and writing about it. And then, uh, you know, the, the other part is uh, I'm very active in trying to stay fit. Uh, physically, yeah, mentally, really and yeah, it's very important. And the other thing uh, that I noticed about you, but is uh, uh, very important in in our lives, is that uh, uh, today and just today, uh, it was in Canada the anti-bullying day throughout Canada, and and vs individually and as a company have been involved in that here for the last six years and uh, so it was a very special day where uh, you know we have been supporting the uh, efforts around that and I know it's part of your background as well as being proactive yeah. in those areas and uh, so what I did is kind of looked up I thought I wonder if there's an anti-bullying day in the United States and then uh, I couldn't find anything there, but I did find California's anti-bullying laws and policies, and and they are very strong at it. And uh, so I found something on Google that at least got my interest and in say, yeah, that's very proactive, you know. So I like to like yeah. to see that. So so talking about writing and being proactive, and you know, so. Uh, so most of the books that you, virtually all of the books that you do are, are, uh, are not the type of books that I write, but are more fictional, would you say? Yeah, like, I'd say the majority of my books are fiction, of course, occasionally in my books. I have just, you know, some, like, little things that are maybe based on a true story. Um, however, kind of see it up there. Um, you, you, I have, you won't know her name which is, um, like, my novel told in poetry. And that book, um, it's basically just a true story. Like, yeah. you know, it's very, 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 you know, there's only, like, a couple things that were changed. And that's my book that's really about, like, bullying and particularly in middle school. So now, uh, Shandy, you are already quite successful. You have relationships now with... Uh, you know, with uh, uh, distributors and, 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 and all the steps along the way. So now frequently you're probably getting asked to speak on the books that you do. So you're yeah. being, and obviously you're a good speaker already at your age, Thank which you. is amazing because it's a very, very important part. Being a good, effective communicator is extremely important not only in writing, but also in terms of, obviously, he is sitting here uh, you know, in North America, and uh, I'm in central British Columbia, Canada, and you are in San Diego. I love San Diego, by the way. And, uh, but, but all of a sudden, you find yourself in all kinds of different settings where you're being asked to interpret not only the books that you're writing, but, but left, let you go the path and then the other thing I believe is important so at all times now likely you working on a project you already yeah. mentally likely have some other projects that you deliberating so so if I look at the books that you've done already uh, 15 that have been published and 30 that you've written 
you must be doing yeah. about two books a year. I do, I think, publish. Let's see. I think it's actually four published now. Okay. Um, I, I have to keep track of that. I should know that because I usually try to do one per season. And then I write, um, however, like, it's like it's between like seven to nine books per year it really depends like for for example the book i'm writing right now is extremely long so of course that's taking up a lot of time and i'm all, for context also i'm always writing and i'm always editing a book so whenever i'm done writing one you know i'm going to edit a book and then i'm also like writing a new one okay so the people that are watching you and especially your peers from your age group you know, you, 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 you are still a, a very young, successful author. What would be your recommendation to the people that are watching us, the young people in particular, and saying, uh, I like what she is doing, so give me some ideas for that young person that is maybe 12, 13, 14, wherever, and saying, what would you recommend them to do? become a good writer in terms of saying, uh, make sure that if you write, it is articulate, understood, it has to follow a path. What do they do to become good writers? So I say this every single time I ask the question, that the best thing you can do is just write. And I recommend writing every day. Try to write the same amount every day because then you're just building up the habit and each time, like I notice this, each time I sit down to write, I learn something new. Maybe there's like something I didn't quite understand. Maybe it's about my book or about my writing style that I can really uncover. And you just improve every time. The other thing I recommend is honestly just read a lot. Um, because the more you read, you, you will start to pick up on other author styles and notice what they're doing that you like. And sometimes this is just a fun exercise. I don't recommend, you know, doing this to actually, if you want, you know, for like books you're going to publish. Um, but a fun exercise, especially when you're starting out, is just start right, like read a book or just read a part of a book and then try to mimic the author's style. Like write down, like what do they do that makes their writing like unique? And it's just like, it's a really fun exercise. And then you can start noticing what about their style you like and what about their style you don't like. And then you maybe start to incorporate that into your own writing. Because what I think is just your writing style is a combination of everything like you've read that you've really enjoyed. And like everything, like, you know, like every author's writing style you've read, it's just something that like, it's a piece, there's a piece of like what you enjoyed in there. And as you go, then you can start really developing your own unique voice. And that's something that honestly takes a lot of time. I don't think I actually developed my like writing style until I was several books in. Like at first it was like very rocky. I was like, you know, still unsure about what I was doing. Maybe I didn't like, you know, I didn't like what I was writing as much and then really I just started like developing like okay well what makes Shanti Hershenson's book you know Sha Shanti Hershenson book the Shanti Hershenson book like what is it and then from there I really just started like trying to like develop that really good like voice in both third person and first person because I have very different styles for those two types of writing. <laughs> so when you went to New York you said earlier you took a course there what was that all about? Oh, yeah. So I went to the School of the New York Times last year, and I'm going to go back this year, too. And there I took a course on writing for a film, because while writing novels is obviously my main thing, I think it would be really nice to maybe write like a movie one day or write like or, you know, adapt one of my books into a movie. And I think getting into film is something that, you know, like it's interesting to me. So I think I should pursue it. Now, the, the other part is that you mentioned earlier, you have always also worked with a writing coach. Yeah. Has that been helpful to you? Yeah, it's I, honestly, you know, obviously you can't edit a book on your own and then publish it. That doesn't work. So, you know, my writing coach like proofreads my books for me and also, you know, looks for plot holes. Because what I find is when I'm writing, you know, I can write something and it can make perfect sense to me and it's going to make no sense to anyone else. <laughs> So um, really being able to get like multiple pairs of eyes on your writing is extremely important. Yeah, and, that's, and, and the same applies to me, right? So the, uh, 
and, and that obviously my writing style is different than yours because I write more about 80 years of my life that are behind me in a lot of cases and less so fictional, although I have an imagination as well. And so once you get into writing, as you said earlier, is you, have you done one book, two books, and all of a sudden you're starting to get the feel. And, and uh, you know, so for most people that ask me about, uh, you know, the, the, the critical part about writing is that, uh, you know, uh, get other people to look at it, what you're doing, get a good imagination as to what you want to write. Uh, then at the same time, do not have any illusions about it is that soon as you have written a book that uh, the publishers will call you and say, oh, have you got a book because we want to print it in? It doesn't happen that way. It takes marketing and, and a lot of initiative to uh, go out there and it has to be your book. Like in my case, uh, I go out and talk in different venues about the books that I'm writing and, uh, and that's all part of it. The other part that I did is I wondered if you do that. I do an audio on all of my books. Yeah, I've started audio books. And I read my own. I find that is important. You know, so not all people do that, but some do. And I find it, uh, you know, interesting and it, uh, you know, makes it more personal from my perspective. But even now yeah. still, you know, having been a writer for the last five years, it takes still time to find the markets. I'm now looking more international, translating some of my books into, I was born in Holland and, uh, oh, cool. 1940, in 1940. And uh, so English is not my original and language. In fact, I grew up in northeastern Holland speaking dialect. That is, if I speak my dialect, the people in Holland would not understand my oh, dialect. No. no. And so I had to, and I love speaking dialect. So when I was in Holland, kind of growing up there, and then went into the Air Force, drafted into the Air Force when I was 18, for two years, I had to acquire speaking high Dutch. And, and so, and I barely got that under control. Then when I was 23, I left and started to live in Canada. And, uh, you know, and uh, so I had to acquire English because when I got here, I couldn't speak English. And, uh, uh, and, and uh, the, the interesting part there and saying, well, why did you go to Canada when you were, I was born in 1940, and so that was the Second World War when I grew up, and then there was, uh, the Second World War was five years, and I can still remember as a kid, and I speak about oh, wow. that quite frequently, uh, yeah. you know, on November the 11th when we have Remembrings Day, I to speak to several schools here about I remembered the Second World War. And I remember what effect it has on families and why it is so important in my mind to have the two minutes of silence and what is the purpose of it. And so, but when I was only three and a half, four years old, I remember that hundreds of planes, 300, 400 planes in the air were bombing Germany and uh, the, the Allied forces and on the ground. They landed in Normandy in mid 2000, uh, uh, 1944, and pushed their way through Western Holland, yeah. and, and we were close to the border. And I still remember that. And, uh, and uh, it was the winter of 1944 and 45 was the hunger winter, and things were pretty tough. And uh, so I remember a lot of that. And, uh, it, and, and I say to a lot of people that, uh, you know, we are so lucky in North America both uh, U.S. and Canada, is that I fly around a lot and I do a lot of business even in the United States. And every time I fly in a plane, I sit by the window, I look out of the window and I say, it's paradise. You know, we are yeah. so lucky and that we have and then seeing around the world so many challenges. And, uh, you know, so, but uh, 
I remember a lot of that part and I really appreciate it here. And we were liberated by, and that's the point that I want to make for you, is that we were liberated by the Canadian Army April the 12th, 1945. And, and only being five years old, I always knew then that I would go to the land of my heroes and uh, already when I was five years old. And, and so, and I was able to do that when I was 23, started with nothing, came here, and then I've been, I'm not here for the purpose of saying how successful I am, but I've been quite successful and, and part of that has been uh, building businesses. But the other part is that it took a long time for me to when I discovered that I was ADHD, that had been a challenge for me for many, many years. I already was 57 years old and then after I discovered it, I said, oh my God, that's me when I read it in the book and about ADHD and, uh, and that kind of pulled the trigger for me. And so I've been very, very active since the time, writing books, podcasting, speaking yeah. on issues and being very, very active. And, uh, you know, so that has been kind of my journey, you know, so. But yeah, that's I, amazing. Yeah, so, and it gave me a lot of history and a lot of things for me to write about and to speak about. So I'm also very active on the speaking circuit and particularly uh, being interactive with young people so that, uh, you know, about how much we should appreciate what we have and, and, and why it is so important for us to remember that what we now have versus what is going on in the rest of the world, we are very, very fortunate. And we should be involved in the community. And I've always done that, is giving back and being active in the community. So, but writing is uh, something that I'm very active in, being very involved with uh, the schools and uh, young people in particular and speaking to them and, uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, all those things are important to me. Yeah. So that being said then, Shanti, so how do you see your way going forward? You will keep writing, so you're still in school, I presume, high school. Yeah, and, and yeah I'm in 10th grade. And, and which grade are you in? 10th. 10th. So pretty soon you have to make a decision in terms of, obviously you already made a decision in terms of career, <laughs> Writing will be an important part of that. Screenplay, probably movies, part of, of that potentially. So you will go to college or university direction. Yeah. Have you got? I definitely idea? want to go to college. I have a really long list of colleges. Like honestly, I just want to go somewhere that's like really good for writing and will give really give me what I need. Um, but yeah, definitely in terms of the future, you know, like I want to learn more and I want to keep doing what I'm doing. And of course, you know, that means like expanding like what I write and, you know, writing because I honestly, I have a million ideas. I don't think I'll ever run out of ideas. No, and that's a good thing, right? So I was kind of looking yeah. for you. You also quite involved in sports, right? To so, so I, I was more a while ago, um, but I've gotten a couple injuries, but I'm getting back into so what, what kind of sport do you like? So I used to fence for a really long time, and it was a ton of fun, but I moved. So um, I was actually born in L.A., and I lived for, in L.A. for 11 years. So then when we moved, I had to find a new studio, and I did that for a while, but it wasn't as good as, like, my old place. So I'm still trying to, like, get, you know, get back on my feet there and find a new place. And then I've done, I've done a couple different sports in the last couple of years. Um, I've also, I did free running for a while. And um, that's probably mentioned in my bio, actually. Um, and I only, like, recently, like, I kept getting injured, but I might also go, up, go back to it. And then I also skateboard. And that's something, like, I do it on and off, but it's, like, one of my favorites. Now, in regards to bullying is something that is close to your mind. Yeah. Talk about that a little bit, your experiences, and how do you see it, and are we... We meaning government in, in California and, and, and as I told you about Canada, we, we've, at least in my mind, become much more proactive in recognizing bullying. What's your views on that? 
Yeah, I think, um, so personally, I've been bullied a lot in my life. Um, you know, my book, You Won't Know Her Name, is about um, bullying in middle school, and that was where I got bullied really, really badly. And honestly, I felt as though the reception I got from my school was not at all, like, okay. You know, I went, I, you know, I told them what happened. There was evidence, all of that. And they were like, oh, it's just middle school. It happens all the time. And obviously it's not. And I think that is a mentality that a lot of school administrators have, whether it's middle school and high school. And, you know, even though California has like very good, like bullying laws, there's always room for improvement. And I think beginning with that is by like starting to like look at this mindset we have. We're like, oh, well, you know, that's a part of life kids are going to be mean, but sometimes it's more than kids being mean, if that makes sense. And it's very important to like, look at it from, you know, both from the victim's perspective and, you know, like just, yeah, just the biggest thing is like, you know, changing like that mindset. Um, For example, when I was touring high schools, I toured a high school and like, we asked like, oh, you know, how is it? Is there bullying? And the kids were like, well, there's not more bullying than any other school that mindset is what part of the problem. Right. Is it getting better though? Is it? Oh yeah. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's a good thing, right? So the, uh, and, and so like, uh, but I indicated to you in Canada, it was uh, actually building uh, day just today. And, and so uh, a lot of people are, uh, you know, wearing shirts with anti-bullying marks on it. So I, I believe that is, uh, a big step forward, you know? Yeah, definitely. So what is the other, you know, so there you are in the prime beginning of your life. And obviously you laid a very interesting uh, foundation already is that uh, you will keep writing and especially when people watching you, what are your recommendations for your age group as they as I said earlier, is that I frequently speak to young people in particular, your age, or in some cases younger than that, uh, about a number of things. Uh, you know, the, the one is my memories of the war years, and I usually go at least to four different schools uh, on, on November the 11th to share with them why I believe it is important to remember for those that uh, gave uh, their lives for us to keep us free and uh, and but also on other topics and other issues and that's one of the reasons that I wrote this book uh, finding your passion living the dream what do you recommend to those that are not quite as fortunate as you are uh, you know in terms of making decisions about careers or so many young people they say i really don't know uh, I, if i talk to them if they college or uh, high schools or universities even and saying so what do you like to do or what direction do you want to go with your life and a lot of them say well i don't know you know and and but i usually recommend respectfully is saying that maybe maybe start talking or interacting with people say uh hypothetically speaking you want to be a truck driver talk to truck drivers if you want to be a carpenter talk to somebody who's carpenter or contract talk to somebody who's contracting or you want to be a lawyer talk to somebody who's a lawyer or you want to be a doc or talk to people that are doctors or a ceo like uh, i'm a ceo of companies i've been obviously very successful i love interacting with young people and saying what made you do what you're doing and what is the reason for it? How did it happen? And, and, and what are the benefits of your career and by which you record that kind of a thing? And, and yeah. so that is one of the main reasons that I wrote this book, Finding Your Passion, because living the dream, even now still at 83 years old, I used to get up at 5.30 in the morning I'm always in the hurry. I always make my bet and and I always look positive at the day ahead of me. No matter how many challenges we have, uh, I always believe that if things are difficult today, tomorrow they will be better. Yeah, so, um, yeah. Oh, what were we gonna say, sorry? 
Uh, what I was saying is, uh, you know, that what would you recommend oh, yeah. to people in your age group that have not been blessed like yourself, have necessarily with the writing uh, career at this point already, but, but in a general sense? Yeah, so, you know, there's a lot of people my age that don't know, like, what to do. And honestly, just what I tell them is, like, look, you know, it's rare to know, like, exactly what you want to do when you're a teenager and to already be doing it. So, first off, don't compare yourself to anyone else. And second, you know, just don't freak out about it. You know, you do have time. And as you go, just start, like, noticing, like, what do you enjoy doing? And what, what are your favorite subjects in school? What can you imagine yourself doing? Not because you want to make money, but what do you imagine yourself like actually enjoying? And then, because usually, you know, if you enjoy something, you could find a way to make money from it. Yeah. And, and then at least get a direction that you want to go in, right? Saying, yeah. you know, like, uh, maybe I want to work with my hands, right? So I, I like that, hypothetically speaking. Or maybe I want to... You know, I would like to be constructing homes or I like to make on, I'm for a guy or a girl for that matter, I'm mechanically inclined and I like that. Or I want to be an artist. I want to be a painter or whatever, right? Or maybe a doc or a lawyer. Then I said, find out more about it. What do they do in, in, in a general sense that puts somebody in that direction, not suggesting they have time at, at your age, but at least you get a feeling. I found that for myself when I was young, you know, that obviously uh, I was so impressed by the Canadian army that liberated us that my dream was to go to Canada, always was, right? For, to go to the land yeah. of my heroes. My grandfather was a carpenter and my dad worked in a lumber mill, so I wanted to go. I liked the idea of going into the lumber industry and manufacture lumber and, and make furniture. And, and, and I was quite good working with my hands. So that developed a hobby. And the more you enjoy what you're doing, the more effective you will be in, in uh, accomplishing the goals that makes a fairly happy life, right? Yeah, definitely. So, what else have you got to share with me about what you're doing or, you know, the, you're going to keep working, obviously, on the career that you have right now, follow your way into college in a general direction. Yeah. And, and then uh, probably end up writing as part of your career, screenwriting in particular, uh, uh, movie industry potentially, especially in California, yeah. right? Yeah, so really, you know, what I'm thinking is I'm just going to keep going and, you know, with every year I do a bit better and I get more reach. Yeah, I think like honestly just my biggest announcement is just asking everybody to go pre-order my book or order it. Um, it comes out on April 29th. And that is the title of the book is? Little Green Man. Little Green Man. And, and yes. have you got a car? Is it behind you there, Shandy? It's not one of the ones behind me. I just got the printed copies in yesterday. So they're okay. in the other room. Okay. And so that will be available when? On all the major areas? On April 29th. April 29th. And so be it on Amazon. It will be distributed yeah. all it's throughout the united states yeah everywhere you buy books online like internationally and um in some bookstores too okay and and uh, so that will be on the on the 29th right yeah excellent well shanty this was an amazing conversation that we had about uh, i'm very very impressed with uh you know the obviously the, the, the skill sets that you have, I can appreciate what it takes to become a successful writer and getting to the point where at least the publishers or the distributors, if you call them or send them a note, at least you will get a response by now. Yeah. To get to that point alone 
is already a challenge for most people. But uh, I believe what we want to leave everybody with is that writing can be a lot of fun for young people in particular, and, and, and not only for the purpose of becoming uh, an, an author, successful author, but also for uh, a form of communication. Writing is very effective. It allows you to become more interactive. Obviously, the other part, you've been very successful on uh, podcasting uh, and hosting, uh, which is the whole new media, uh, you know, where before but speaking uh, to groups of people, obviously you and me here from Southern California or Central British Columbia, we have a discussion about you as a writer. And at the same time, we already know that tens of thousands of people are watching our conversation. That's unique and podcasting, and especially with yeah. the media being virtual. It, and it's only at the beginning, so it's going to go far beyond this. Yeah. At least that's my view. I agree, yeah. Shanti, it was a pleasure and a privilege to have you on my podcast. And uh, I look forward to your books. Have you got a website mm -hmm. that uh, we can leave a mic on our podcast? Yeah, my website is shantihershenson.com. Dot com. Okay. And, and uh, then our podcast will be available. Uh, like our podcast today is Friday. This one will be released on Monday. All right. Sounds good. Oh, to, oh today is Thursday. Sorry. Tomorrow oh, yeah, is Friday. So it will be released tomorrow. So, okay, and sounds we, good. And we do very little editing on it. So what you see is what you get. Sounds good. I see. It was my pleasure. Good luck to you. We'll stay in touch. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye.